Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to shoot some cool portraits using smoke grenades. Trying to kill me! So, uh, Jesus! And also maybe a little bit about how not to shoot with smoke grenades. So you're probably watching this video because you've seen the photos online of photographers shooting with brightly coloured smoke grenades and getting some really cool effects. Well, my good friend and fellow photographer Paul England had recently shot a local band where the guys had brought along some of these smoke grenades for the shoot. The images he managed to capture were so cool and this is a technique that I've been dying to try out for a long time now. I've just not been able to get my hands on some smoke grenades. But luckily for me, at the end of their shoot, the guys had a handful of these smoke grenades left over and they were generous enough to sell them to me. So we headed out to see what we could capture. The smoke grenades themselves were made by a company called Enola Gay, which produce wire pull smoke grenades that last for around 90 seconds, which makes them perfect for photography. You can also get them in a whole range of colors, but the ones that we had were bright pink. Now I'm gonna admit I was woefully unprepared for this entire shoot. We basically didn't have much of a plan at all. I was solely gonna go off the advice that Paul could give me on the day and even he admitted that it could be quite tricky to work with these smoke grenades. So we recruited the help of our good friend and local cockney, Oz, who was more than willing to model for us. He also had a few creative ideas of his own. There he is. Hey. <laughs> on that. Or is that too? Will that upset YouTube? Yeah. Possibly. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, might do. <laughs> Look at that. At all of them. <laughs> so I wanted to try and be clever, and rather than using natural light, which Paul had done previously, I wanted to try and use off camera flash. I always like using flash for portraits, and I thought that perhaps the flash would add a bit more contrast to the plumes of smoke as they were coming out of the grenades, and maybe also increase the level of drama in the shot. So to light the scene, I used my Godox V860 Mark II flash guns and I fired them off camera with a small gridded octobox attached. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> In order to overpower the sunlight, I had to set the flash to full power just to get it bright enough. Luckily, the recycle times on my flashes are pretty good, so it didn't slow things down too much. So as we were shooting in more of an urban environment, I wanted Oz to just stand stationary looking menacing at the camera as this bright pink smoke was going off behind him because I thought that would create a nice contrast. I then asked Paul if he could be in charge of using the smoke grenades as he'd used them before and knew how to use them safely. And he was sort of adding in the plumes of smoke behind Oz as we were shooting. So I tried to time the shots just as Paul waved the smoke behind Oz and as we got a nice big plume of smoke, so that meant that I could get a nice clear shot of Oz's face. Now, the first of many mistakes I made on that day was shooting in a small courtyard area. And we did that with what we thought were the right intentions because it was quite windy and I didn't just want the smoke to be blowing away everywhere. So we shot in a courtyard to try and keep it contained. The only problem with that is it worked a little bit too well. Trying to kill me! So, uh, Jesus! Crying purple. Oh my god, that was really awesome. It's all over your face. Oh Look like a makeup on. As you can tell, that stuff is rancid. It is so strong and it gets all up in your nose and your eyes and it stings and it absolutely stinks. So if you're gonna try this out, make sure you shoot in a well-ventilated area. Also on a side note, be careful not to get this stuff near your clothes. Paul accidentally clipped the side of Oz's hoodie at one point and it left a large dark pink mark on his clothing, which he couldn't get out. He had to throw the hoodie away. So just be careful with that as well. Although I was fairly happy with the first set of results, I wanted to add more smoke, but knew that lighting two smoke grenades in that small area would just be a death sentence. So we moved the shoot out the front and tried again. Two, one. So this time around, I asked Oz to hold one of the lit smoke grenades in front of him, and then I asked Paul to hold a second one behind him to fill in the background. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have asked Oz to wave the smoke around a bit at the bottom of the frame, because all he ended up doing was holding it stationary in front of his face, which meant that it was impossible to focus, and all we created was this pink mist in front of him, so we didn't get any shots out of that take. And also, we wasted two smoke grenades, which meant we only had two more grenades left before we had to call it a day. So at this point, I decided I decided to cut my losses and head back to the original courtyard area and just keep trying the original setup.
Luckily, with everything I had learned through the trial and error, we managed to come away with a shot that I was kind of happy with. Now, although things didn't go exactly how I imagined, it was still a lot of fun trying this technique out, and I can definitely recommend it if you're thinking of giving it a go. So what do you think of our final image? Do you think we need to give it another try? If you do, if we reach 100 likes on this video, then we'll buy a whole new bundle of smoke grenades and we'll try out something more creative and on a bigger scale. So let us know if you want us to do that. Anyway, guys, that's kind of it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.